If you don't know ableism, what it is and how it works, then everything else that you think you know about people with disabilities will only confuse you. We're going to talk about it today and I'll give you some will tips along the way. I'm Will Tips Joe. This is Will Tips Wednesday. Hey, Will Tips Joe. Don't be surprised when you get tipped. If you are new to our channel, you'll discover that we give wheelchair tips about the wheelchair lifestyle and the disability culture. I'm a subject matter expert with 43 years experience living the wheelchair life, with 20 years in my career. I made this video because people have been asking for it. I hope you find it useful. This video message is intended to stimulate your mind to recognize ableism when you see it. Become encouraged enough to take action in disability awareness and inclusion, and be mindful that people with disabilities are differently able. So let's look at ways in which we all can adapt. My aim is to give you another perspective so you can make a difference in this world. Ableism comes in many forms, such as institutionalized ableism, non-institutionalized ableism, and internalized ableism. But today, we're gonna to focus on ableism, personal prejudice, and negligence. Wheel tip, ableism is more than just discrimination and personal prejudice against disabled people in favor of able-bodied people. Ableism is the conscious, unconscious, intentional, unintentional actions that able-bodied people do against people with disabilities in an attempt to devalue their work. Wheel tip, always remember that a person with a disability has self-worth as a human being. So please, don't be an ableist. I want you to see ableism through my eyes. Let's look at a few scenarios from my experiences to show you how ableism works. I have been in line at the checkout counters in stores and other places where there were long wait times and people were impatient, and an able-bodied person has jumped in front of me and tried to play it off like they didn't even see me in line waiting too. Several times, I had to say to them that the line starts behind me. I know I may be short because I use a wheelchair, but I deserve the same common courtesy and respect just like everyone else. Not only has this happened to me, but this has happened to my friends who have disabilities too. I remember when I've been ignored or forgotten about by the salesperson when I've gone into stores to buy something or to get service. Sometimes the salesperson would later tell me that they forgot about me, but I know they ignored me because they were asked to help an able-bodied person who came in after I did. And I would have to speak up to let them know that I was here before them and I should be next. That's how ableism works. It made me feel like I was invisible. We are all citizens here. My time is valuable just like the next person's. I deserve excellent customer service too. While these examples are overt, you will notice more subtle signs of ableism in my next two stories in a minute one at the rental car counter and another at the hotel. While we can't legislate morality, together we can still do our part to break down prejudices and stereotypes that ableists have against people with disabilities. For example, at work, my presence on my job and on duty in travel was probably the single most thing that I have done to help break down prejudices and negative stereotypes about people with disabilities. My disability is visible. You can see my wheelchair right here. 
once upon a time when I was on travel, two colleagues and I were standing at the rental car counter and the agent asked my colleague, can they help him? My colleague told the agent to talk to me because I was the one renting the car. That subtle ableism. There appeared to be an assumption by the rental car agent that I couldn't possibly be the one renting a car since I was in a wheelchair standing beside my two able-bodied colleagues, so they thought that the car must have been for one of them. Wheel tip, ableism negligence is not okay, okay? In my experiences, oftentimes, people with disabilities get no consideration from ableists who are unconcerned, insensible, or unaffected by a request for a reasonable accommodation or help with a special need and appear to blow it off because it has happened to me. I remember when I experienced negligence at the hotel check-in counter. Often, I would be the last of my colleagues to get a room key. Sometimes I would be waiting for hours because the hotel didn't have an accessible room ready for me when I got there, even though that I had made reservations months in advance and even checked weeks and days before I arrived so there wouldn't be any problems when I got there in person. But there were problems many times and delays that made me wait to be accommodated. At other times, I was forced to accept the next available non-wheelchair accessible room. I had to work around architectural barriers just so I would have a place to stay the night. Many times I couldn't take a shower or a bath because the door was too narrow for my wheelchair to pass through it. I had to wash up in a sink if I could reach it. I feel like the subliminal message that they showed me was that my time wasn't valued and it was okay to waste it and inconvenience me. Of course I never stayed there again. I could go on a tangent about all the countless actions ableist had taken against me, but instead I'll share with you how I grew to handle it and respond to it. In the beginning, I used to get very angry, annoyed, and frustrated, but over time I matured and mellowed out. I learned to turn those uncomfortable situations into teachable moments. I handled it by remaining calm when discussing my need for reasonable accommodations, and together we worked it out. At the time, my aim was to bring a level of awareness to ableists that will hopefully lead to disability etiquette and awareness on their part. Little did they know that their encounter with me was helping to change their own perceptions and behavior from being an ableist to disability awareness and inclusion. At least that was my hope. Imagine what would happen if people in society would make an effort to create opportunities for innovation and inclusion that in turn would make people with disabilities feel welcome. That way, everybody benefits. If you've gotten any value from this video today, please spread the message by sharing this video with your friends. And click like and write a comment and smash the subscribe button. And let me know what videos you would like to see us do for you in the future. And we'll get it done. You have just been tipped by Will Tips Joe.